Today, I will be explaining why I have a very strong conviction that Ethereum is next to rally after Bitcoin and other altcoins are also starting to cool down. And this is why I am heavily betting on Ethereum in the next four months. So the background of this is that the Ethereum spot ETF hype is starting right now and will uh, most likely last until May of this year. And I will show you guys in today's video exactly when the deadline could be for the Ethereum ETF approval this year. And once we know the deadline, it doesn't even really matter whether the news comes or not, because we have seen what happened with the Bitcoin spot ETF. As long as the news is there, price trends up until the uh, event actually happens and then everything quiets down. So that's what we're going to cover for today. And if you're new here to the channel, welcome. My name is Dennis. I'm a crypto angel investor for the past five years, and I have invested in over 100 crypto companies. On this channel, I share my views on market trends and investing strategy to build wealth in crypto. Uh, if you guys have any questions or uh, you know requests for Ethereum, etc., please leave them down in the chat and in the comments, and we will do a Q&A in the very end. Okay, let's get into today's content. First, let's talk about why the Ethereum ETF is looking much more optimistic right now. So if you guys didn't know yet, um, Bitcoin ETF is not the only one that is loved by the TradFi giants. In fact, Ethereum has already been getting the same coverage. BlackRock themselves have already filed for a spot Ethereum ETF uh, back in November. Right. A lot of people still didn't know this news because it was overshadowed by the Bitcoin ETF and even some uh, close friends that I had in crypto that are uh, they were not aware of this. They just thought it's a uh, kind of um, a hope for Ethereum to follow suit. But BlackRock is really the firm to watch, right, because BlackRock has the highest approval rate in any firm uh, in the US. Right. So they have. 99.8% approval rate for all their ETF filings with uh, 576 approvals now after the latest Bitcoin swap ETF and only one rejection ever. So the fact that they have filed for a Ethereum ETF as well is very, very strong sign that this will happen, statistically speaking. Uh, and Larry Fink today has also gone on TV to express his enthusiasm for Ethereum spot ETF, right? So today he had an interview on C CNBC, first talking about the Bitcoin spot ETF, and then he also covered Ethereum spot. I want to point out three things that he has basically said in just one minute. So number one is that uh, he came up and then said, so remember, the interviewer asked, do you think any other cryptocurrencies could be getting ETFs? And he actually interrupted and says Ethereum, right? So this is obviously because they have filed for Ethereum spot ETF. That, that is the only other one, right? And he also cannot comment on others. Uh, and in terms of actually how he sees this approval could go down, he couldn't really say, of, of course, because, you know, he, he is powerful, but he's not he's not the law. He's not regulator. And all he could say is that he values the existence, right, for a spot ETF for Ethereum. Now, the other thing that was said by the interviewer was that um, whether this Ethereum spot ETF will need to go through court action again before it gets approved. So this is referring to what happened with Grayscale, right? So if you guys remember uh, when uh, Grayscale had their lawsuit with the SEC, right? And how in the end, uh, the DC Circuit Court of Appeals ruled in August that the SEC was arbitrary and capricious in its decision to reject Grayscale's attempt to turn its Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which was the uh, kind of future style ETF, into a spot ETF. And once this appeal came out, the uh, conversion for their ETF was much more clear it's just a matter of time and what's interesting is that ethereum also has the exact same standing as bitcoin right because ethereum also has 
futures ETFs trading on U.S. Uh, traditional markets, right? So here is the CME Group's uh, website, and you see Bitcoin futures and Ethereum futures, right? So the fact that uh, this is already these same kind of instruments already trade for both Bitcoin and Ethereum gives the uh, one sec. People are saying no sound. Let me see, no sound or no. Sound wasn't loud enough during the video. Okay, yeah, sound wasn't loud enough during the uh, interview, I guess. Yeah, okay, uh, I didn't want it to go too loud. So, um, but let me just basically, you know, summarize, right? First, um, Larry Fink said uh, he, there's the potential Ethereum ETF, right? Second thing he said is uh, he sees value in having an Ethereum ETF. Third thing is that uh, thing he said is that he cannot comment on whether the Ethereum ETF needs to go through go through a lawsuit to happen, and the fourth kind of long period is his kind of view on why Ethereum is meaningful for TradFi, which is that tokenization, tokenization of securities, and how stocks and um, other you know traditional instruments should be trading as tokens on chain in order to be transparent in, in order to combat fraud and this is the biggest narrative that he likes to push right so that that's the four things he said so going back to this grayscale importance um the fact that bitcoin and ethereum both have futures etf trading already in tradfi markets and the fact that grayscale already beats the sec in their lawsuit to convert uh, their futures e uh, Bitcoin trust into a spot ETF means that while well, the new lawsuit kind of stands even less ground. So if the SEC wants to push back against an Ethereum spot ETF uh, from Grayscale, well, there's already the the legal precedent, right? Because they have gone through court and Grayscale can just simply say, okay, well, we have our Bitcoin trust that have been converted. We have our Ethereum trust, which is the exact same format. Why can it not be converted now, right? So that is why um, a th that is a very significant point that is positive for the uh, potential of Ethereum spot ETF. And here on this piece of interview with Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric uh, Balchunas, he is one of the experts that have been covering Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum ETF. He also uh, tends to think so as well. That uh, the fact that the SEC has way less ground to sue Grayscale and other firms trying to do an Ethereum ETF this time around. Okay, uh, let's see. Ba -ba -bum. Yeah, so that is BlackRock's stance on the uh, Ethereum ETF. That is uh, Larry Fink's stance on the ETF. And in terms of the actual deadline and the timeline for the Ethereum spot ETF, again, we look at the two leading analysts from Bloomberg, which are Jam Sa uh, James Safart and uh, Eric Balchunas, right? You guys should definitely follow these two people. They are honestly amazing. You know, they actually, through their research of uh, identifying the timeframes, for uh, the Bitcoin ETF, right? The fact that they, they looked at not only the deadlines, you know, the, just those typical charts you see, but also how the SEC is likely to approve these different ETFs altogether. They identify that January 10th, right? The, week, the first week of January was the window of opportunity that the SEC has in order to approve all Bitcoin ETFs together, right? So in order to not make any, any kings in this market, uh, they are likely to approve everyone together. And that is why we actually um, were able to time this date really well and say that the ETF, uh, Bitcoin ETF was going to happen on the 10th, and it did. So these guys are absolute legends. Uh, and this time around for the Ethereum ETF, here's what they said, right? So Eric said that he expects 70% chance of an Ethereum spot ETF being approved in May. This is according to the uh, deadline. And the SEC needs to make approval decisions on multiple Ethereum spot ETF applications by the end of May, including Venek, ARC21 shares, and Hashdex. So the deadlines are right here. So you see, currently there are seven filings uh, last dated in December, which are Venek, ARC21 shares, Hashdex. These were all already, uh, these firms already have Bitcoin ETFs approved this week. 
And of course, we have the Grayscale Ethereum Trust conversion, similar to the big, uh, similar to their Bitcoin Trust conversion. We have Invesco, iShares. This is BlackRock, and we have Fidelity. So, the first four here, first four firms. These are somewhat, you know, like Web three related firms. Uh, whereas the last three here, BlackRock, Fidelity, and Invesco, these guys are huge, right? These guys are real um, industry giants in TradFi. So another interesting thing to note is their final deadlines here, right? So we know that the SEC is likely to continue pushing each deadline until the very end. This is what they did with Bitcoin. Now, what is uh, the most likely deadline well that's going to be may 23rd 2024 this year so in about uh, four and a half months this is because uh if they take the same kind of approach like they did with the bitcoin etf approvals they will want to approve everyone together in order to make everyone launch together and make the markets more balanced so if they do that then well venek ARK21 shares and hashtags are all legitimate, right? They all have Bitcoin ETFs already, so they know exactly that process to get through the application. So that's why if they are to approve any of these guys, they will have to do so together in uh, around May 23rd. It's very less likely that they deny these first guys with uh, their final deadline, but then go on to approve BlackRock's application in August, right? Uh, but on the other hand, it's also way less likely for the SEC to deny everyone's applications because we already have BlackRock's filing. So BlackRock has, again, 99.8% uh, approval rate when they filed ETFs and only one rejection ever, right? So with all those things being said, that is why highest chance of approval for the Ethereum spot ETF is, is looking like May 23rd of this year. Okay, and here you can see um, James Safard, uh, the other leading analyst from Bloomberg, also has hinted before, right? Unfortunately, he thinks, uh, you know, the ETF naysayers for Ethereum, they will likely be upset by June of next year, which is referring to this May 2023, uh, May 23rd deadline. Okay. So those are all the positives. Now, in terms of actual negatives, of course, the chance for the Ethereum ETF to happen is definitely a bit lower than the Bitcoin ETF because the SEC has come out multiple times and said, okay, like Bitcoin is a security, uh, Bitcoin isn't a security, it's a commodity. Many times they have, um, they have hinted that uh, Ethereum is also treated as a commodity, especially in some of the DeFi lawsuits around Uniswap, around you know other uh, other cryptocurrency related lawsuits. They have always excluded Ethereum and said that Ethereum is not a security. But they have never really, you know, officially come out with a statement, unlike on Bitcoin. So that's why the SEC is still trying to push back, and this is what uh, Gary Gensler has said today. So. On a CNBC segment this morning, the SEC chair remained vague about Ethereum's status as a security, even though they have, you know, pretty much hinted at this point like five, six times that Ethereum is a commodity, just like Bitcoin. Uh, and I do have the latest uh, interview with Gary Gensler himself, and we're going to watch this segment also about whether there should be an Ethereum ETF and the like. Is that something you think you would take on uh, proactively? Is that something that ultimately, in the same way that Grayscale had to go to court, is, is that, does is the, is the court decision around Bitcoin to you uh, act as a precedent on other currencies? I, I, I look at what we did this week as it's cabin to one non-security commodity uh, Called Bitcoin, like we've had gold spot exchange traded products and silver exchange traded right. products in the past and approved in the past. This is cabin just to that one non security commodity token. People are now talking about. That's what he said. So, cabin to one non security commodity token that is Bitcoin, 
now having a ETF. A lot of people are reading this very negatively. I honestly don't think so because you can see like he is clearly like distraught, right? He, he is shaking and he couldn't say whether, you know, we cannot approve Ethereum. Um, we see Ethereum as a security. He didn't even mention Ethereum. He only said, okay, Bitcoin is not a security is a commodity and thus we can approve an ETF for it just like gold. But, you know, that basically leaves the entire ground open, right? Is Ethereum a security or a commodity? Well, the, the answer is clear. It's a commodity. They have not only this year, but for the past three years or so, in so many lawsuits, the SEC and the CFTC have both said Ethereum, both hinted that Ethereum is a commodity, not a security. So I, in my opinion, the approval is eventually going to happen, uh, especially now that the Bitcoin ETF has already happened. Now, there is a little bit of uh, leak this morning coming from, I'm not sure how credible this is, but sources in adjacent to the BlackRock Ethereum ETF filing saying an approval is a long, long road. So the source says consensus from BlackRock, Coinbase, and Jane Street folks is there is no way Ethereum ETF happens in 2024. And the source also says the SEC might lose in court if challenged, but they can credibly distinguish Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Gensler already signaled his thoughts in BTC approval language. I don't think so. I think this is, I've read the exact you know statement. He didn't really say, say so for anything of uh, his stance on Ethereum. For Gensler, delaying the launch by a year via litigation is a win for him. That I could see. So really what, uh, take this with a grain of salt, right? This is just an anonymous source from Twitter. Um, yeah, the source was apparently in the room with BlackRock and other aforementioned execs on BTC ETF launch day. So all in all, this basically says the SEC and Gensler will try to fight back potentially through a litigation and they might do it. But again, referring back to the fact that um, Bitcoin and Ethereum both already have futures ETF trading and they, uh, the SEC has already lost their lawsuit versus Grayscale. Could they find another angle to bring another litigation? Maybe. But if they take the same Grayscale conversion angle, that's not going to work, right? Uh, so I think take this with a grain of salt. Maybe we see a uh, Ethereum related, you know, lawsuit happening in the next few months in order to delay this launch. But if that doesn't happen, I would say May 23rd, the deadline, most likely we will see the Ethereum spot ETF. So that is why, you know, it's not as guaranteed, like 90% chance as the Bitcoin spot ETF, but it's still a very high chance that this happens in May. Okay, so that is all of the Ethereum ETF news and ETF data that I have for you guys. And now let's shift our uh, focus back to the charts and back to how Ethereum is doing relative to the market. So in the past few days, I've already, already covered that. I am not touching Bitcoin trade position uh, right after you know this uh, ETF approval because there's going to be so much chop, right? Yesterday, we already saw another chop. Today, can you really say this is buy or this is a sell? Like, I don't know. So I'm not touching this. However, for Ethereum, I am really, really eyeing another entry really soon. So Ethereum, uh, just very straightforward for uh, an entry opportunity, right? I would target right at 24.10, right? $2,410. This will be a, an amazing buying opportunity if it happens, right? So uh, why is that so? Well, when we look at the Ethereum performance for the entire month of December, this has been essentially 40 days of consolidation while everything else, including Bitcoin, had a major rally in the market, right? Bitcoin, Solana, Amax, uh, Matic, everything else had had a major rally but ethereum was consolidating and so many people were calling ethereum like it's just going to lag behind but finally after the bitcoin spot etf approval ethereum broke out and now 
potentially is coming back down for this retest before the next run up. So I am eyeing this very closely right now. And if you want to follow my trades on this entry, make sure to join our Discord uh, with the link in the description, discord.gg slash virtual bacon. I'm going to be updating all of my entry setups for Ethereum as well as Ethereum related altcoins, such as layer twos, such as uh, LSD protocols. And we will be heavily targeting these as entries in the next week. Uh, again, you can find the link in the description and also uh, you can find our copy trading setup in the Discord as well as on uh, my website, virtualbacon.com, where you can directly copy my trades uh, on Fairdesk and also on BingX. So I have all of those linked in the description. Okay, so that's for Ethereum in the immediate short term. Also, uh, another you know long-term outlook for this level is that the $2,400 level, right, dates all the way back to January 2022. You see there were a lot of uh, consolidation and bounce around this level uh, coming from November 2021 when the, when the last bull run ended. And now you see this level is starting to get broken out again, but it's very you know, it's, it's very understandable for there to be some resistance, especially at this slightly higher level around 2550, right? You see there were a lot of wicks here, right? The lower levels, you could say that was around 2400, but then 2550-ish were the candle closest that um, acted as support before. So now those levels act as significant resistance. So I think it's totally normal for Ethereum to do something like, like these before breaking out and that's why uh, once we get closer back into this range especially in the 2400s I think that's going to be a buy for me for sure okay now that's pure ethereum price action a couple more things worth noting number one is that the price chart of ethereum versus bitcoin uh, is very interesting so when you look at uh, for example when we put BTC USD on top, and then we put Ethereum USD on the bottom here. You see that on a daily time frame, Bitcoin has already broken out of its uh, bear market consolidation, which was around thirty thousand dollar level, right? You see, thirty k Bitcoin dates back to May twenty twenty one as the uh, bull market, the first dip in the bull market. And then it was tested twice in the summer, uh, in the spring and summer uh, rallies before finally it broke out in October. Whereas on the chart of Ethereum, this same level is much closer, right? So you see for Ethereum, that level is right around $2,000, right? So you see dates back to May of 2021, and then test it in August 2022, and then twice again in the March and June rallies before it kind of got broken out in November, but that was $2,000, right? And now we are only at $2,500 versus on Bitcoin, right? How much of a rally has already happened on Bitcoin since its breakout, right? So from 31000 uh, to all the way up to 47,000, that is already a 50% rally. Whereas on Ethereum, since the breakout, we are only at around 26%. So this is why Ethereum has been clearly lagging behind Bitcoin, right? And um, when you map Ethereum's chart on top of Bitcoin's, it's somewhere around these ranges, right? It really hasn't had its major run up yet. And that is likely to happen soon. Uh, another way to look at this is if you look at the Ethereum versus versus Bitcoin chart, right, in a ratio format, you see um, I have been calling for this uh, mean reversion, this bounce for Ethereum versus Bitcoin for quite a while. You know, a lot of other analysts have called for Ethereum versus Bitcoin to drop much lower, but I really wasn't in that camp. I have made many videos on this already. Uh, I really was think uh, saying that Ethereum versus Bitcoin ratio at this 0.05 uh, ratio level 
most likely is a kind of bottom. Even if it wasn't a bottom, it would be a really fantastic entry opportunity because the downside here is very clear, right? You can limit your loss. If this level gets broken, you know that Ethereum is gonna fall much lower. So you can have a very clear stop loss somewhere like these around 0 0.045, and that will be only about 10% away. So the risk to reward ratio getting into Ethereum here and betting that it's gonna outperform Bitcoin is very high. So you see, this is already starting to bounce back, uh, ETH versus BTC ratio. And my outlook on this is that I think this is likely to continue rallying, albeit slowly, uh, going into the to uh, this full-on bull run, right? And I could see Ethereum outperforming Bitcoin by about 50 to 60% from here, right? So if we take the current level, 43% uh, outperformance of Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Uh, and this color coding I have on the chart here, this is the Bitcoin uh, halving rainbow chart that typically uh, that takes into account the Bitcoin halving events and maps it in terms of uh, how many months it uh, the market is leading up to the Bitcoin halving. And then once the Bitcoin halving happens, the color shifts and then the markets typically do much better. So this chart is also very telling because usually when we when we are in this stages of the uh, Bitcoin halving cycles where the rainbow chart is in this purple color and just about to turn orange, these are really good periods to be betting on Ethereum. As you can see, the period after, usually Ethereum has outperformed Bitcoin, right? So in 2016, this has happened. In 2020, this has happened. And now we are again about to go into this stage, right? So uh, from now until the Bitcoin halving happens in April, about three months away, that is uh, right around when this rainbow chart will turn uh, into orange. And considering the fact that the Bitcoin ET uh, the Ethereum ETF is likely to happen in May, the timing is practically perfect for uh, betting on Ethereum right now to outperform Bitcoin and the overall market. Okay, and last but not least, when you look at some other altcoins, right? Maybe you can say, oh, like altcoin market has not been doing well and you know we want to bet on Bitcoin. This is not true, right? So when you look at the total crypto market cap, right? Even this has been outperforming Ethereum, right? Since the breakout, uh in december in, in november and december even this chart has broken out of its uh, bear market downtrend and is now getting this retest right breakout retest for the overall altcoin market right this is total three this is the market cap of all cryptos excluding bitcoin and ethereum and when we pick out specific winners it becomes even more obvious right so we have solana for example so solana has had this major run-up versus Ethereum. You see this, uh, this is a ratio chart of Sol versus ETH. And now this is, this ratio is starting to correct. Very clearly Solana is underperforming Ethereum since its peak uh, on Christmas day, actually. And similarly, some of the other outperformers that are seen as Ethereum killers, right? We have AVAX already starting to mean, uh, mean revert. Uh, where AVAX is underperforming Ethereum, as you can see with this ratio, even for things like Polkadot, right? I cannot believe Polkadot has been outperforming Ethereum in December, but it did, right? And now the mean reversion is happening again and cannot say much more, right? Ethereum is clearly in the limelight right now, not only compared to Bitcoin, but compared to other alternative layer ones as well. Uh, so that is why I am very convinced on Ethereum and in the immediate short term, my trade positions will all be targeting not only Ethereum, but Ethereum related altcoins in Ethereum layer twos in Ethereum liquid staking. And also for medium to long term, I am heavily holding a large Ethereum bag and Ethereum, you know, alt, like uh, beta place 
uh, in the aforementioned like other you know ecosystem place for Ethereum, and I think all of these will do well for the next three to four months uh, going into May before the Ethereum ETF. Uh, and last but not least, I know a lot of people will say, okay, May, what if the Ethereum ETF doesn't get approved? That doesn't actually matter, right? Because we have already seen how the Bitcoin ETF approval has played out, the trade going into the Bitcoin ETF approval was that you bet on the speculation, right? So the months, like three to four months leading up to the final deadline, saw a 40% jump for Bitcoin price, right? And now that the ETF has been approved, the trade is much harder to do. So whether the ETF gets approved or not, doesn't actually matter. We just need to ride the wave of speculation going into May and bet on that more and more people will, will take a long position on Ethereum because they expect the ETF to be approved. Now, the actual effect of the ETF approval isn't as significant, right? So everyone already sees this, which means this Ethereum uh, trade leading into the ETF deadline is much easier to do versus like, you know, trying to figure out if this ETF will be approved or not. Uh, so th that is my stance on this. And that is why I have heavy conviction on Ethereum uh, basically from now until end of May four month period, there's plenty of buy, dip buying opportunities for Ethereum uh, to get long on this position. Okay, that's it. That's everything I have prepared for today. Uh, very bullish on Ethereum. And I think this is going to be the easiest trade going into the next four months. Uh, that's it. Before we get into the Q&As, uh, let me just say, if you like this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss another live stream. And to follow my trade setups and altcoin alerts, make sure to join our Discord with the link in the description or go to discord.gg slash virtual bacon. You can find all my trade alerts uh, for Bitcoin and Ethereum, altcoin setups, etc., as well as a discussion community that you can talk with other, uh, not only traders, but also investors, whether you have you know, some other altcoin alpha that you're not sure about. I also share some of my alpha as well when it comes to airdrops, uh, new altcoin launches, etc., uh, farming opportunities, etc. So our Discord is completely free. You can get into it just by signing up to one of our exchange partners. Uh, you can find the link in the description. And if you want more day-to-day -day alpha, make sure to follow me on Twitter or X at virtualbacon0x. This is where I drop day-to-day uh, -day alpha when I'm doing research for these videos and I drop them in threads format. We're going to double down on Twitter alpha going to the new year. So make sure to follow me there as well. That's it. Thank you guys for joining.